What's up guys, J.R. Raymond back again, coming to you from my house where today I kind of want to go through a little bit of Pete Trash talking. I love watching Pete Trash talk. Some of it's a little awkward, but some of it's so cool to, so cool to watch. And this is one of the videos that uh, was put up by the PBA. And this was Pete Weber versus Jason Belmonte at the 2015 USBC Masters. This was one of those weird moments about his towel and some other junk and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to watch this and I'm going to kind of just give you some thoughts on what I think here through this show. So let's take a look. Weber made it to the semifinal. He's on a mission. On a Opening mission. shot, higher seed Belmonte. Forces Weber to begin. And a four pin. It's Little interesting optimist. because during the break, Weber's allowed to practice on the alternate lane right next to the TV pair. And before both of his matches, he was warming, he was actually staying warm, throwing a urethane ball and thinking, I wonder if Pete's going to make the switch to that. Nope, stays with what he's been using. He doesn't throw urethane very often. Weber covers up the single pin, still Pete's some notorious foot issues. for having foot issues on TV, too. So often. But he doesn't use those shoes, at least unless he's changed, but he doesn't use shoes with interchangeable well, soles usually. There's no more power outage left on the show with Jason Belmonte and A.J. Johnson left. The two-time defending Masters champion looking for a third. No one has ever done that. This show was so interesting. And this ball, I bet you Opening this show shot. sold a lot of these bowling balls. That hinge, unhinged or whatever it is. Is that what it is? And a matching unhinged? four pin for Belmonte. It just looked so strong. Winning down three there. in a row in majors, Jason Couch accomplished that, Randy, in the tournament of champions. Yeah, and you know, I have to uh, announce, unfortunately, that Jason Couch's mother, Darlene, passed away just a couple of nights ago. And I know there's a lot of heavy hearts out, out there right now, including my own. And um, I know everybody here, Jason's family out here, we all want to pass along our deepest condolences to Jason, his dad Cliff, and the rest of the Couch family. This was one of the rare times when Jason actually looked I fairly cleaned my up. my thoughts as well. He doesn't have the big neck beard going and all and now, that. Kind of trimmed head down up to nice. Lane side with Kimberly. Usually pretty sloppy looking. Thanks, guys. Mike, why do you think it was that you weren't able to double until the 10th? Uh, transition. Um, you know, bowling uh, only a one-game match and only getting limited shots of practice, the lanes are going to transition quite rapidly as opposed to as they do in the qualifying or the match play. And, uh, you know, come, going from the practice and waiting a game to coming in and getting a few shots, you have to make your decisions on the fly. And I just didn't make my decision with confidence to, to get, put the strikes together until towards the end of the game. Well, how are these lanes transitioning? Well, uh, rapidly. With the lights and the heat, it's really warm in the set. Um, they transition considerably faster than they did during the week so you know like i said you got to make your decisions on the fly and do it with confidence and i just didn't do it with confidence in the beginning of the game until the end and i gave Pete too much uh you know leeway to run him down thank you so much for your time guys back to you in the booth belmonte crossing over for a strike and you can see just how much deeper uh belmonte's playing than weber and pete probably a good 15 boards right of belmonte and belmonte you know he said it Told us last night he was going to go to his A game. He was going to move way in. Stuck again. And got Come him this on, time. Really? The approach got him this time. Look at that. Just He's dead stuck. You gotta know where you stick, right? One time he sl he slips. One time he sticks, and it's all seems to be just on that right lane. It's got to be the heat from the lighting and the humidity in the building players have not had to deal with that throughout the entire week that is frustrating really to be honest with i think you. now pete's trailing for the first time in any match no problems today all of a sudden just i don't know stick career majors leaders on the pba tour this, this obviously has changed Anthony with quite 10, a bit tied with weber belmo wasn't even on Mike the list Albee yet now he's got including three of these what, masters, 14 or 15 Walter a williams jr Crazy majors, to think about. Of these masters. Weber now trailing for the first time today, third frame. <laughs> it looks like he's using the same bowling ball, but he's got a couple out there that have different drillings. He's going with a pin up on one lane and a pin down on the other. 
Del Monte think... called his shot. He said Weber would get here and I will beat him. And he has not done so yet. Here's uh, Belmonte, the number two seed, and his role through match play, defeating Chris Kelso, Major Mika Kovuniemi, Hall of Famer Tom Baker, Anthony Lavery Spar, and then he lost in the winner's bracket championship match to A.J. Johnson. Mixing strike. Takes so advantage of that crossover. This so over under. But that one barely made a corner. And the last three went Brooklyn and high four pen. 2013 title match in the Tournament of Champions when the big heavy hand guys were lofting the left gutter cap. Weber was using that great hand in rotation and boy, he uh, he really took care of Bill Monte in that matchup. I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm a firm believer now after watching a lot of bowling over the Weber says, hey, if that's what Bill Monte wants to think, I'm 2-0 oh in I TV really feel against like, him. He hasn't uh, anything to say until he beats me. So loud. And there's a look at the record. I really Career feel like finals between Pete Weber touch, and Belmonte. Belmonte on the double for Softness and touch oh, is more yeah. important than Weber. I don't think Weber is as important. And there's the Weber big difference big with the power of Jason Belmonte. To room for error. We saw Weber leave a lot of 10 pins last game. And when Belmonte's bowling think ball that hits the pins, there's usually nothing left standing. It creates that much more. Because if you have, if you have touch and good rotation, you know, your hand is in a good spot and you're just rolling it. Your touch is going to create rev rate or create shot for room Weber for error. On the lane. He left the two and rev rate's not going to give you that much more than what good touch will, in my opinion. So it's really important to create good touch. But for those of you who are. Yeah, woo! The Look at that. Dang. Oh, give him, <laughs> give him a pump, the baby. Give him a pump. <laughs> two tickets to the gun show. But. Uh, I mean, for those of you that want to learn a little bit of rubber, I do have a clinic coming up. That was a big hit because if he doesn't strike on that ball, he fails to double. End of August. Bill Monty's working on a three-bagger. Watch the clinic, action of the head pin coming touch. across, and, and the nose things. of the head pin takes out the 10, and then Weber just gives it the business. Three-hour class. We'll get a bunch of online time. We'll, we'll work it out. Probably heard us some talking right about Bill Monty's season. power. He says, hey, Bill Monty, I got your power right here. Now he's looking to... Throw another strike here and cut this deficit to 14. Come on. Third, fourth arrow. Man, that, looks, that looks so Slugs much further, right? That well, that's almost been his best shot in terms of carry. I don't want his towel on the ball return. I don't want to stuff off his towel on my ball. Is that mixer again? Yeah, he's worried about the towel. It's been his best, on. most reliable hit today. And the and the reason I I kind of understand this is because you set that towel down, you get other oil on the ball in spots that the oil wouldn't normally be, or if you use rosin or somebody uses any type of conditioner, that gets on your bowling ball. I don't think Pete. I don't, I'd have to watch, but I don't think Pete's the type to wipe his ball off. So he wants it to stay natural. He wants the oil to stay on the on the ball where it goes. Well, you, you heard Pete say it himself. Belmonte's got a four bagger. Two of those Brooklyn's on either Brooks end. Watch this. Throws him down. You know, to pop his lens back in. You never want to see it when it happens to you. You never want to do it when you're bowling against your opponent. Unfortunately, sometimes it's part of the game. Two Brooklyn's. That'll fire you up. Stat? He's made 11, 9 out of 11 finals. All right, Bulls. All right. See, there's that over, over under from that ball, Just though. Just a two-pin. That could looks have been so quick, territory. that. Jason's Very in a tough sensitive. spot because if he gets the ball too far to the right, he's going to go light. If he gets it left, there's no chance of that ball holding its line. Pete broke his glasses. Not sure if he's got a backup pair or not. Snapping the lens back in. Pete also apparently irritated with the placement of Belmonte's equipment on the ball rack. He said he didn't want his towel touching his bowling ball. He's setting it right on his ball. Like, I don't know, man. We've got some action going I get here. It. That kind of irritates me three. too. When we come back, I'm going to tell you why like Jason her. hasn't used Places a razor for forever. Oh, and there's going to be a Pete Weber, Jason Belmonte bowling ball comparison. It's just routine, like it's, it's Belmo's routine. And puts his leg Back up, half of our semifinal match down. at a yeah. Schwaben and Bowling Alley. Mike Jakubowski with Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler. Mike, would you call this match an international friendly? I would call this an international approaching unfriendly. 
<laughs> it's a heck of a rivalry. Both of these guys have got history. Can't get it. And the ten pin doesn't fall. There's so much on the line. This is a, this has eluded the Weber family for years. Belmonte's that one just comes around no the head been a little before. bit too late. Belmo came in saying, I want just a this man. Six inches sooner and it would have been strike. And what was Pete's response? He said he's not afraid of these young guys. Ah. Look out. Skinny's it. Knocks it down, sparing the box for Weber. And again, a footing issue. Well, he's got a striking issue as well, especially on the right lane. And unfortunately, that is one of the Pete things Weber, that he's going to have to finish on, on that on lane. Tour. You know, people miss a spare and it's always, it's always their feet, it's never that they actually going missed back it. And forth from a pin oh, up to I stopped pin down. He goes to the pin up. Never could I ever miss a spare. His Come ball on, reps during the commercial break, it's the I'm only not saying one Pete that did that here, but I'm saying that's what happens a lot. You see people always miss a spare and then check their slide. Got to have something to blame. Over hooks, yeah, 3 six, ten. Left lane is broken down. It looks like it's going to start hooking now. The right lane looks like something for the goblin oil right in though. front of the head pin because the shot on the right lane looked really good and it got to that spot right there and just kept accelerating straight. That one actually grabs the lane and hooks. Dude, I like the guys with personality. Weber cleans up the spare. I'm not sure of people that just walk up, throw the shot, today. turn around, sit Blaine, down. Uh, Approach. Show some personality. Show Belmonte equipment and Belmonte that you're upset. Two well placed or you're happy. Hits. I think Belmo does a good job with and doing both. Jason you know. Belmonte's he knows when to stay cool and collect it. He knows when to you know pump it up a little bit. Like he does a pretty good job. Better nowadays than he did. That's high. Oh. Three, six, nine, ten. A particularly tough spare in this ball. No, I'm watching yeah, his ball because reaction. of that back pin. It's amazing. Remember, to me we that talked he won about this right before we went to break. I gave you a little uh, something about a razor with Jason Belmonte. He said, "You know what? But he gets it I done. haven't used a razor on my face in over six years." I was just thinking, man, I wish I could get away with that. Three, six, nine, ten. Tough spare. He's going to get that bowling ball to the right side of the three pin. The ball will drive the six into the ten, and he will have that bowling ball take the nine out. Expert cover for That's Belmonte, good. and he fills the box in the seventh. He leads by 23. That's a really good conversion. He's going to take a re-rack on the left lane. All right, hey, let's take a look at... Jason Belmonte versus Pete Weber. Their bowling ball is going down the lane in this track tech talk. You guys see a huge difference. Belmonte on the left, Weber on the right. Not only does Belmonte's ball rotate much faster, it also gets to the pins much faster. Controlling Gotta match speed, the rev rate with the speed. If your speed's too angle, slow, but your rev rate's too high. Good luck controlling that. Player of the year that. and the two-time defending champion here. Your Plus 23 eighth frame. Oh my. That was almost a massive blower 710. Weber could have used that in his corner. Belmonte, again, tough way to play this oil pattern. It's so flat in the middle. He's got to be really good. I guess that's the other thing that Rev Rate does for you is it throws, throws pins around a little bit more, so it breaks up splits pretty Pete easy. Like that. Not easy, but easier. Towel up and so that is the other advantage of, of having a little balls. bit of a Rev Rate. He went over and, and told. Out. This 10 pin by rule balls in the gutter, the ball stays in the gutter. It's an open frame. Okay. The tournament director is going to tell Jason oh, not to sorry, put his sorry, towel sorry, sorry. on Weber's equipment anymore. Misses the 10 pin. I mean, we've got some crazy things like, going he on didn't, right here. He looked at his foot placement. And he didn't blame three. the approach for missing it. He Super just said, slam. okay. Potential versus like maybe he thought repeat possibly potential. stood in the wrong place or something, but so and that was kind of like taking ownership of it. Like, I'm not sure Weber the spare. is going to strike again on this right lane, and he needs to. He's got to so, pull the eighth and the tenth frame here. Weber better figure it out that. on this right lane, and then he's got to make an adjustment on the left lane. Belmonte opens the door. These are two of the Weber greatest to ever do it, man. The lead. Eighth frame. Sick watching these guys. <laughs> What's the professional do after an open frame? Give you an opening. 
Heart rate bumps up a little bit. All right, here we go. Well, he can't I'm take in. the lead, but he can Got cut it chance. to one with a strike here. Rerack. <laughs> it it very seems nice like hey, the yo. more agitated he gets, Ray Ray. the better he gets. <laughs> Come up here and push this button for me. The greats can channel it. Weber can channel it. Well, he figured out that he has to go straighter on that lane. What's he going to do on the left lane? Pete is out of re-racks now. The players are allowed to a game. He's done. Big shot coming up right here. Monumental foundation frame. Seven pin. Yeah, baby. Come on, don't miss. You wanted it, you got it. You wanted it, you got it. Well, the greats just find a way to get it done, and the good old Pete Weber. This was a really slow rack, and Weber was just hoping for a break to get back in this match, and that's probably the biggest break he's gotten of this tournament. Delmani, after the open, his foundation packs the pocket. That's a great shot, that's and it was scary. a great react coming off the lanes. Weber knows what Delmonte said. You talked about it. Here's the situation. If Jason Belmonte strikes out in the 10th frame, he will shut out Pete Weber. If he doesn't strike out in the 10th frame, Pete Weber can still win. Max score See, and this is one of the best trash talking Max ones that Pete's had. Pete Weber, but I did think the towel thing was interesting. And there but is a lot of people say that Pete manufactures issues. He just tries to piss himself off. You know, finding something to get mad about because he rolls better when he does. <laughs> Ten back. Great nope. shot. In a spot where you, you know, know you need him, knows exactly what the lanes are giving him. Shots. It's all about execution now. And he prides himself on execution. I think we really miss out on the fact that this player throws it with two hands. And he is the back to back reigning player of the year. He's a special talent, but he does it a totally unconventional way. We're so used to seeing him with this two handed style, I think we lose sight. But the bottom line is. He's figured out what the lanes are giving him. It's all about execution. Where's Can he, he execute towel? here in the oh, tenth he already frame. dropped it. Well, he didn't put it on the ball. That's good. But watch what Belmo does at the end of this frame. Pure double for Belmonte. That's so sick. That's unbelievable. Those are three of the greatest shots I've seen in a while. He needs one more just like it. With that power and that rev rate and those revolutions, but I think he gets in Pete's head here at the end. Just a little bit off. Because he, he needs mean, nine to force Weber to get all three for a tie, a strike. It's all. He over. doesn't strike here. Anything less, Weber can get up and strike out in the tenth. Well, watch frame. what he does yeah. when Weber's getting up Weber to bowl. Weber will make the step ladder. I will face him. I will beat him. You can say it, but you got to do it with the ball. Tenth frame. Come on! Come on! Now we got a chance for a tie. Weber needs all three to tie. Now wait, watch. What a great shot by Belmonte. That's something you don't see his bowling ball leave very often is a weak 10. Goes and grabs his towel. So it's a he liked it as soon as it left his hand. I mean, he hit the head pin Like so at that hard, point, it doesn't matter because you've already set the ball near the towels or near the balls. Or set the towel near the balls. Weber on this right lane was really I don't good. really think it really bothers Pete that much. I think he was just making something out. about it. This right lane, but again, it all Setting goes down on the to the same the ball. thing: That's execution. Different. The last little thing Belmonte did was go get that towel to kind of remind Weber. Mm -hmm. Nope, that's high. Baby split. Jason Belmonte advances. He call his shot. And he's in the title match with an opportunity to go three straight at the Masters. I don't remember, Pete does Pete Weber say anything at the end? Denied the Masters title again. Belmonte advances. He will get the amateur AJ Johnson in the Masters. Yeah, so he doesn't really say anything there, but I'm telling you what, man, like that was. That was an interesting show. I remember I was bowling somewhere at the time when that was happening. I think I was at a regional, and we were watching it. I saw the whole thing going down, and I'm just like, 
classic Pete, man, getting mad about little things. But really, you think about it, that towel being on your bowling ball, whatever residue and stuff's on that ball or on that towel, maybe possibly getting on your ball. I don't know. You never know because you guys know how I feel about wiping balls off. Like, I'm not going to wipe my bowling balls off anymore except my urethane bowling balls, you know, because it – I want that oil on the front part of the ball. So if that's actually cleaning off some of the oil on the ball and makes your ball roll different, it's possible. It's the same thing with like people that use rosin bags and stuff at the, at the ball return, and they're throwing the rosin bag on the ball return in, in between bowling balls. That rosin gets in the bowling balls. Like That can cause some problems. That irritates me is when they're doing that. A lot of times I'll just grab that rosin bag and chuck it over by the chairs or something because I, I don't want rosin all over my bowling balls. You know, that A, that dries up the, the bowling ball, could possibly get in the pores of the bowling ball. You never know, you know. So, I don't know. That's all I got. I just wanted to go through that and watch that. That was pretty cool. So, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll look at some other Pete Weber stuff and some other trash talk. Maybe we'll go to the Brad Angelo one with, uh, who was it? Was it Barnes and Angelo? Yeah, talking about Brooklyn's. That was a good one. We'll talk about that one next time. So, I'm out of here. We'll see you guys later. Take care.